Hey everybody, it's Jeremiah. Um, welcome back. Today uh, I'm going to make a video about Bipolar 1, um, what Bipolar 1 is, and my version of Bipolar 1, because everybody's version of Bipolar 1 is different. So anyway, we'll talk about it in a moment. Talk in a second. Hey everybody, it's Jeremiah again. Um, today, as I said, the uh, video is about the differences of Bipolar 1 and Bipolar 2. Um, today we're going to like, tackle Bipolar 1 and then I'm going to do another uh, video right after this. So we'll be on the same video. Um, it's going to stick with Bipolar 2. So I don't want to mix them up as much as I can. So anyway, let's go to what is a Bipolar Disorder. It's a mental condition characterized by extreme mood swings, fluctuations of mood, uh, and it can happen to kind of anyone. Um, I got diagnosed with Bipolar 1, which is the most severe form of Bipolar Disorder. Um, I got diagnosed um, like 20 years ago, 15 years ago, I can't even remember. I've always been a depressive kid, um, and so I kind of went through different things. Could it be this? Could it be that? Could it be the other? And anyway, uh, we came down to Bipolar 1. And um, um, so Bipolar 1 is more situated around mania for manic um, depression type of thing. So anyway, um, when I'm having an episode of Mac mania, manic, um, I see a change in myself that normally I see more when I'm coming out of it. Um, sometimes when you have um, manic episodes, sometimes they can't last that long. They'll last, you know, a day, two days. Um, the main thing of bipolar one, normally manic episodes last one from seven days above and onwards. There's no set time, but to try and work it from seven days um, to multi-weeks, months, even a year or so. Um, if it gets too much and too severe, um, me, patient, will be hospitalized. I've been hospitalized one time, and I'll tell you, it wasn't fun. Um, but if you're in need um, of, in a situation, I would suggest going to hospital. Um, the people there that can work with this better than anybody else, um, I'm not a professional and I try not to give a professional diagnosis. The only thing I can do is give my diagnosis of me. Um, so my bipolar to somebody else's bipolar will chances are be slightly different. We'll have the same characteristics, um, but not necessarily we'll have the same bipolar. And so, um, so my manic episodes, my mood gets very elevated and sometimes I can um, not be full of myself, but... Um, can look more on myself as like, hey, you're doing good. Of I can work out a lot. Um, and if I'm in a manic episode, I'm working out a lot. And then I start to see, you know, bulking up and different things. And then um, I'll start taking it too far because then I'm like, well, I don't need to eat as much and I want to get ripped to shreds and everybody's going to stare at me. And then uh, I'll go to the beach and like I'll be walking around and I'll be like, look at him, he looks amazing. And so I get into that mode and that's when I'm starting to realize that it's not my personality normally, um, but I'm going into a heavy manic episodes. Uh, my energy goes through the roof. Um, I have been known, somehow not lately, um, that when I'm in a manic episode that I will clean the house like crazy and normally be very spotless. Also, when I'm in a manic thing, I do not need that much sleep. Um, I can get by with three hours of sleep. And a lot of times, um, because I have terrible sleeping, I have to take sleeping pills. And I know people that take one of my medications um, um, is a trazodone, and so um, people I know, they'll take like 25 milligrams to help them sleep. This is only one of my medications, and so I normally take around 600 milligrams on top of another sleeping pill and my bipolar, three medications for bipolar. Um, and so that's, I need to be put down a lot of times. I just have terrible sleeping habits, um, I get racing thoughts, 
Um, I sleep with a fan on because I need constant noise to shut me down. Um, and so my thoughts can sometimes start irritating me and they irritate me because um, my thoughts are going so fast but I can't keep up with them myself. Um, and it's very irritating because um, it's like a catch-22. My thoughts are racing. How can I keep up with her? I mean, we're the same thing. And you just start... Um, it's hard to work out, so it makes you more irritable than you were just before. You become really impulsive. My th big thing is I go shopping, and Amazon loves me. And so I seem to shop a lot more... Um, also, uh, sexuality, sexual, um, <laughs> I don't know how to put it, your sexual needs are very heightened. And so a lot of times, um, it's weird to say, but I masturbate a lot because I just can't keep up with myself. I didn't want to say that, but hey, whatever, this is who it is. Um, so anyway... Some people have reckless behavior. I can start driving the car a little faster than I normally would. Um, I do start to feel invincible. Um, I also get angry really, really quick. And that comes from the irritability, but um, I get angry. It's so sad um, that my dog, um, I have a big Doberman Pinscher and she's super cute. But, um, she knows when I'm going manic and um, it really upsets me because I'll shout because I'm getting frustrated with myself and she runs away. And so th that really saddens me because I would never hurt her or do anything against her. It's just that she can see um, I'm not in my normal condition of being nice, friendly, happy daddy, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, um, that's more of the um, crazy mania side. Um, bipolar 1 doesn't necessarily have a lot of depression. Normally there's kind of on a higher. Oh, so sometimes, sorry, changing back to um, manic. So a lot of times with um, manic episodes, um, you can keep going high and there's different levels of high and, and at the far top is schizophrenia. And... Um, so you can climb up and everything intensifies, intensifies. And then sometimes you can get to a point where you kind of hear voices. Um, I've kind of heard voices um, one or two times. Um, it's very scary. Um, that's a time where really you should call um, 911 and talk to somebody, maybe be hospitalized and to be taken care of. Um, also, if you do need more information about mental health conditions, you can now call in America um, 988. Again, the phone number is 988. And there's somebody there that will talk to you about um, suicidal thoughts of depression that you're going through right there and then. And probably would advise you on um, how to take care of yourself, um, what your next step is, and um, that you're not alone. There's billions of us. And... Um, I think, um, this it sounds weird, but it's kind of a blessing because you're in this unique club. And I'm not afraid to talk about having bipolar. And the reason I talked about bipolar was I'm a hairstylist and one of my clients was talking to me about, um, she was in a city center and there was this guy running around naked, screaming. And um, uh, when she talked to me about it, she said, oh my God, this guy downtown was bipolar. He was like, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I have bipolar. And at the point, I'd never really talked about it. And she didn't believe me, but I just want to talk about it now that not everybody with bipolar is homeless, living under a bridge and screaming their heads off. You know, we are, if we're open with ourselves and we cover ourselves with a great group of friends, partners, doctors, therapists, um, you can live a pretty much a normal life with medication and uh, I have a great... Uh, psychiatrists and therapists. Some people will take a long time before they find one, but my advice is always keep finding one. Um, with medication, it's not going to get right the first time, and you work at it, and you work at it with your psychiatrist, and you have to be honest 
with your psychiatrist and the therapist. They're not mind readers. And the more honest you are, the more that they can do to help you. Um, I've got great ones, as I said. So I just say, if you don't find somebody you're comfortable with, then there's always somebody else. Um, again, you could even call 988 and have, ask for some advice on that. So anyway, um, depressive episodes with me, Bipolar One, um, not necessarily the, um, for the diagnosis that doesn't normally come in. I can do, um, when I have uh, depressive episodes, um, as much as I can go super high, I can go super low. Uh, my medication normally keeps me in the middle. Um, but sometimes it's like a heartbeat and it goes bloop, and I can go up and I come right back down. I hate uh, the manic modes, which a lot of people love it because you're this energy and everything else. I hate it because I know at the end of it, there's a fall. And so um, that scares me. A lot of people come off medications because they want uh, manic high episodes. I stay on my medications because I don't want them. Um, again, I hate the fall afterwards. And a lot of times, the higher you go up, the harder the fall is. Anyway, um, so normally when we have bipolar one, people have uh, depressive episodes. They're pretty much severe. Um, this significantly leads you impairment. And um, with me, I'll be honest, I was on a bad one um, about six weeks ago. And um, I didn't know up from down. And it, it, it was a weird situation. And this is when you always have to be honest with yourself and talk to people and be honest with doctors and everything else. So, low down. And it, this is the first time I talked about it. Um, so I'm always going to be honest because um, it is who I am. And so I'm going to have a little drink first. It's... A um, soda diet. I'm not going to plug the name. Anyway, um, yeah, there's no alcohol in there. Thank God. Anyway, um, so I was out with a friend. I met some of the people. And I was walking back to the house. And I was in San Diego right now. I was walking and um, all of a sudden it just hit me like uh, somebody punched Tyson or something. It just hit me. And I was just going downhill fast. I only had one beer um, with such people, but you would have thought that I had 20. I was like staggering. Um, my left didn't know right and right didn't know left. So I called my husband and um, luckily he knows what to say and he's very calming and he asks me the right questions. He doesn't tell me, am I okay all the time? He just knows I'm not okay. So you don't irritate with saying, are you okay? Um, he's good at kind of direction. Anyway, um, I said I need to go to hospital. And um, there's two hospitals I wouldn't want to go to. Um, one of them I went to. And so <laughs> he talked me into getting back to the house. It's a point of I didn't even know um, what road I was at. So I had to share my location. I was on the phone. Um, and so, yeah. And so I shared my location. I got back to the house. And so he said, okay, let's look for um, hospital. So we're both online. And he says, take your pills. Um, so I'm like, okay. So I take my pills. And then um, I fall asleep. And so he got me out of it the next day. And still kind of today, this is a few weeks later, I'm still in a bit of a funk. I'm still, um, it, it's like the time when you take your contact lenses out and you get the little bit of a fog thing. That's how I feel right now. I don't feel like I'm 100%. I'm not down bad. Um, and I do have an in-person um, appointment with my therapist next week. Um, oh, not therapist, psychiatrist. I talk to my therapist also next week. Um, but I've been honest about it. And at one point I used to be frightened to say anything in case I got hospitalized. But, but I realized that um, they're not the doctors, not there to put you in hospital. They're there to help you. 
And so if they if it's out of the realm that they can't take care of you, that you could be a danger to yourself, you could be a danger to others, or you could be running around the street naked. <laughs> like that guy that my client saw. Anyway, um, uh, and so then you should go to the hospital. So with me, I'm kind of in the funk. I think I need my medications tweaked, which just happen from time to time. Anyway, so that's, my version of bipolar one. Um, I'm going to look at bipolar two next, and um, we'll go back to that. All right. Thank you. Hopefully, this has helped somebody, um, or helps somebody to help somebody else. Um, thank you for always listening to me and um, being part of my life. It helps.